My name is Nancy Rowland, and you spell it R-O-W-L-A-N-D. And I spell Nancy the old-fashioned way, N-A-N-C-Y. Okay, would you believe that our, what, non-engineering Florence Richards roped me in one time to come out here to work, and it was the 4th of July at a sales table, and it was raining, and then it would be sunshiny and so forth, and somehow it, it, there were nice people out here, it was a lovely, lovely sight, and I thought, well, why not? Why not come on out here and become a member? So that's how it all started. So thank Florence for it. Well, I guess it's because I'm sort of a big mouth, and um, the more noise I made, um, I, the more people thought I knew what I was talking about and so forth. So uh, that's how I got further into the thing and so forth. I became particularly interested in it because being a northerner, as you can probably tell, um, um, we thought that the revolution had started up in up in uh, New England. And the more I got into Patrick Henry and so forth, I realized that probably he was more responsible for the Revolutionary War to come to fruition um, than anybody up there, because with his uh, um, tax uh, resolutions and so forth, uh, and going up and down the East Coast on the newspapers and so forth, it was that that sort of started the spark of the revolution. And so I thought, well, gosh, that's really very interesting. So I guess I felt good about it and warm about it and wanted to do things for it. And so I got very interested in it. And apparently people thought I was interested enough to become the president. Um, we didn't have much to do with that. The blacksmith shop was there, uh, was built. and. There it was, and we decided, wouldn't it be great if some of our male uh, uh, docents or male family members uh, could become blacksmiths and do that for us? So uh, my husband uh, was forced into it, as I said. I mean, I think you would make a wonderful blacksmith. And then there were two other people who went down to the John Campbell School in North Carolina, and uh, they learned in a weekend enough blacksmithing that they can come back now and give absolutely wonderful uh, exhibitions for school children and also for the adults. And I must say, um, it's one of the most popular uh, attractions on the Living History Tour. People are really fascinated with that sort of stuff. The Memorial Garden, there are so many women in the past who have done so much for the auxiliary. Uh, and we thought it would be a nice thing to, to honor them. And so we had to take the idea for a memorial garden to the Building and Grounds Committee, um, but apparently they approved it and they feel it's a great idea too. So we're going to have a memorial garden now that um, will honor those people in the foundation and also our people in the uh, um, auxiliary. Um, with perhaps a flower, a favorite flower that they wanted to grow, or a, a shrub, or a tree, with a little bit of sign saying thank you for all that you have done in the past. And I guess probably the most important thing that, that has come out of this whole thing is our naturalization ceremony. Um, at one time I saw that Scotchtown had a naturalization ceremony and I thought, out here is too beautiful is not to have one here if we could have it. So um, I wrote to Virgil Goode and um, told him he was familiar with, with uh, Red Hill and he, he got right on the ball and we got a naturalization ceremony. I think it was about three years ago, wasn't it? Right, and it, it's a booming success and I think it's going to be a perennial uh, thing and it's just a beautiful moving ceremony that these immigrants come out here uh, and become citizens uh, in Patrick Henry's last residence. <laughs>